Hey, Bob WP here, and welcome to Do The Woo, The WooCommerce Builder Podcast. Today's Woo Bits is brought to you by our newest community friend, Jetpack. For the first time, you can customize not only which Jetpack feature is loaded onto your site, but also choose which individual plugins you want to install. They've launched seven individual plugins for their most popular features and will continue to add more throughout 2023. So check them out at jetpack.com. Now in today's WooBits, I was pondering my latest redesign and rebranding of bobwp.com, which I'm sure you have done with WooCommerce sites for your clients. For me, it went from diving into the editor and blocks, or at least the thought of doing so, to eventually using Cadence theme. So I thought I'd bring in Nathan Wrigley as a co-host today from WP Builds to talk blocks, themes, and page builders, not in any particular order. So let's dive in. I'm here with Nathan from WP Builds. Nathan, welcome to Whoopits. Thank you very much for having me. I really, really appreciate you taking the time to chat to me. Yeah, I think I like this Friday show I'm doing now because I can kind of bring somebody in on the same level as a co-host and we just don't do an interview. We can do a actual discussion around something. And I usually come up with something that I've thought about or seen on the Internet. And this time what happened let me give you a little bit of background. So I was rebranding Bob WP and I had this grandeur idea of, well, I'm going to put in the 2023 theme and I'm just going to explore and learn everything about blocks and the editor. And I, I had all these thoughts. I wrote this post about it and it just sat there as a really ugly little bare boned blog for about two months. And finally, I thought, well, I really need to brand this. I really don't have time to do this. So I I popped in the back because I'm hosting with Nexus. They had Cadence, the theme, already installed. And I thought, hmm, I've used that before. So I went and looked at their, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but essentially their templates are kind of starter templates, they call them. And I breezed through those back and forth a few times. I saw this one called Influencer. You know, they always have to name something. And I thought, well, I could just pop in this, get rid of that part, pop in this, get rid of that part. And so I did. I I loaded it in. And within a day, I had my homepage all done, which is primarily the biggest part of it. You know, there's Mm. going to be Mm. a lot of other pages. So I pondered there for a moment and I thought, oh, my God, I'm a regular WordPress user You know, I felt like I was suddenly that person that just said, I don't want to learn all this or I don't want to even mess with it. I just want something in there and go for it. And that's what I did. And I thought it would be great to talk about this. You're involved with, you know, I mean, you have your favorites in the building area as far as, you know, using blocks or page builders, all that stuff. So you probably have heard this story a lot. I mean, you... You know, and you talk to a lot of people that are building these products. What's your initial thought? Like if he said, okay, I saw Bob do this and, you know, oh yeah, that's Bob or something. Or, you know, if you see somebody say that, which you've probably seen a lot of times, where do you see that pain point? I mean, I, I was thinking about that. There's a, that pain point and the solutions out there. It's kind of interesting because you, just before we hit record, you mentioned that you'd thought that you might try this with the WordPress site editor, aka, you know, the built-in capabilities in a vanilla install of WordPress to to do headers and footers and template parts and all that kind of stuff. And I think I think for for most people that's a really tricky proposition still. Although they've made recent moves to make the navigation a lot easier and they've kind of tabbed the interface so that it's a little bit easier to use. I still think that's really difficult. And so it's quite beguiling, isn't it, to to go down the route of something that you're familiar with. In your case, Cadence. So Cadence was in there and it comes along with its templates. And the templates are kind of 
yelling at you from the UI because there's a, a nice button right at the top of the block editor, which is saying, I can't remember what it says. Is it starter templates or something like that? Yeah, basically, yeah. Yeah, and you click that and the modal pops up and all of a sudden you're presented with dozens and dozens of different options. And you know what? I think if if you're building websites for clients and you know you're charging a pretty penny for it, Perhaps you need to go a little bit further than that and make it a bit more bespoke and a bit more unique. But in your case, it sounds like, from what you were saying, that you you wanted this out the door within a day and you didn't want to spend the time learning anything new. Those kind of solutions feel like a really neat way of getting things done because all you do is really click a button, in comes everything that you need, and then it's really a process of going through the settings for each of the blocks. So I don't know, I've got an image over here, but I don't like the the way it looks. Uh, The opacity is wrong or the, you know, I want to add a bit of a border radius on it or something like that. You go fiddle with it and and it gets you you 90% of, well, maybe more like 60, 70% of where you want to do with the click of a button, which is pretty remarkable. I, I, I don't have any, I don't have any, pride in saying no that's not the way to do it to me that just seems eminently sensible if it's if the tools are there and it fits for your purpose then why not use it you know same for any page builder i think they all come with um their own template packs and things like that so yeah i think it's a really a really affordable way of doing things and the mission of wordpress is to democratize publishing that underlies everything so these kind of things do make it a lot easier there's obviously tweaks to be done in terms of optimization. There's probably things that you could do. SEO, image optimization, probably mm-hmm. things that are in the in the HTML that don't need to be there that you might need to pull out. But generally speaking, if it looks fine, that's probably most of what you want. I should mention accessibility as well, but, you know, mm-hmm. that's a whole other story. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was one of the things. And I'm, you know, fortunately, I do have enough knowledge where I go and I'm a little bit more comfortable at poking around at things. And, you know, there was one part that I couldn't get to work and I actually struggled with it for about an hour and it was even having troubles. And I think there was just, I don't know if it was some little bug or whatever, but overall it was with an attitude of, I just need to get this up and going. It's not rocket science. It's not. I don't need a lot behind the scenes. Everything that I need, I can do, but I want it to look better. Because I I found my design skills really have diminished over the years since I'm not doing them anymore. And when I think I have this idea in my head and I try to put it together, it looks like basically like crap. So (laughs) those those starter template, you know, for me, when I'm doing something for myself, um, you know, do the woo. I had somebody, another company do that and they suggested I put in a certain theme and a certain page builder that would work to get where I wanted to go. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. And of course I had to revisit that. It was Beaver Builder and I had to get in there and relearn that because it had been a while. But with everything that's going on, I'd love to hear your personal opinion because I feel like, yeah, they're not going away anytime soon because that would just be too huge of a transformation. What's your feel with everything that's going on with themes and page builders and blocks, kind of the mesh of it all? I kind of feel there's a whole swell of people who have decided that they're going to transition over to blocks. So it rather than install a page builder, be that a theme or a plugin, they've decided that they're going to install a a block suite, say, or a theme which maybe behaves well with a particular block suite. So you mentioned Cadence, and obviously their theme is designed and their, their, their block suite, Cadence blocks, works well with that. But then, you know, you've also got Generate Press, which is a theme, and Generate Blocks, which is a suite of blocks. And you could put Stackable in there, and there's a whole ton of other ones as well i feel there's a whole bunch of people who are now experimenting with blocks and enjoying it but i don't really see the i don't really see the interest in 
what we might call a goodness a classic page builder it seems like if we'd had that conversation five years ago the word classic in front of page builder just would seem sacrilegious but <laughs> a, a classic page builder so i think the the you know the elementor crowd are still using elementor the beaver builder crowd are still using beaver builder you've got some new incumbents there's there's things like breakdance and there's things like bricks and various other ones and there's some ones that don't seem to have quite the popularity, oxygen and what have you. And then there's the 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 one that I don't seem to mention too much, but seems to be used quite a lot, Divi. There's, there's loads of them, and they seem to be really popular tools still. And whilst in the, the WordPress space, and by that I mean, you know, the kind of the people that I'm often talking to, that there seems to be a, a groundswell of interest in blocks. I don't see any any sense of page builders usage or interest in page builders diminishing i mean i'm signed up to almost every newsletter in the wordpress space that you can be signed up to and constant iterations on the products you know i get updates about roadmap items and features that have just been built in all of these page builders they seem to be very profitable and doing rather well so i my my sense is that page builders will will keep going you know, and if you're coming from a a service like, I don't know, let's say you're on something like Squarespace, you are really familiar with that paradigm. You know, you've got a panel of modules that you can drop in and those modules achieve certain objectives and, you know, image left, text right. This is a gallery and this is a set of posts that are connected to your blog, all of those kind of things. It seems, um, yeah, it's just too straightforward a thing. I mean, maybe something will come along which will challenge their dominance, but I don't see it anytime soon. But but it feels like it's a subset of people at the moment who are pushing into blocks and only using blocks. But I, I don't know. I, I, maybe I've got the sense of that wrong. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing as far as, especially if you're looking at, I mean, we have builders on here, but builders deal with a lot of people that have done their own sites or people that want to do their own sites or think they can do their own sites. And when I was in that situation, I was trying to put my feet in the shoes of a basic user thinking, Mm. you know, I went this route and am I just thinking ease like a more basic user might think and saw that, Ooh, cadence it's right here. Why don't I check this out? Maybe this is the solution I need. And I open up, like you said, those starter templates and I go, ooh, pretty. You know, this sure looks <laughs> a lot better than I've done so far. Yeah, it, it, I just as you were talking there, having having a thought about how WordPress might have changed over the last six or seven years. And it occurs to me that if you'd have gone back, back into the, I don't know, 2015 or something like that, we were, we were surrounded by conversations around almost that page builders were heretical you know it's like this isn't the wordpress way of doing things we must (laughs) we must fiddle with template files and it's important to get your ide out and write lines of code and the css must be done manually and and it really does feel like the that argument has kind of evaporated i i never see that conversation anymore and in fact i see a lot of heavyweight coders who are clearly using page builders because the, the enterprise, in most cases, is just to get the job done as quickly as possible, really. I mean, obviously, there's more considerations than that. You know, you, you want it to look nice and so on and so forth. But if you can, if you could have all of the, if you could have every single thing equal, but you could reduce the time, then that's a bit of a no-brainer. Reducing the time is exactly what page builders are about. You know, they've got all these whiz-bang settings as well, which allow you to do multiple things. But yeah, I think that argument has kind of gone away. I I, I struggled, to be honest with you, getting them in front of clients. I always found there were more errors being made with page <laughs> yeah. builders because you get muscle memory, don't you? You If you use a particular, I don't know, let's say in your case, cadence blocks after a period of time doing it you will know where all the settings are and you won't have to think you'll just click buttons and expand accordion menus and what have you 
and it will be exactly where you're anticipating it being and you'll know what the result of everything that you do is immediately but i always found the enterprise of trying to impart that knowledge to clients was almost impossible given given the constraints in fact i, I remember there were all sorts of projects where people would release videos educating people on particular page builders and those projects i think ultimately always failed because the the page builders would change so rapidly that any video tutorial which was created would very quickly become out of date because they'd move settings from this panel to another panel and so on and so forth but but yeah i just really struggled to make clients aware of them but for me the one that i used right from the outset was was beaver builder and i i mean i wouldn't say i was an expert with it but i certainly knew where everything was and I could I could whip up a page that mimicked almost any other page that you could find on the internet in a matter of minutes because I didn't have to think. It was just instinctive. A bit like driving a car, you know, you do it long enough and you're no longer processing what you're doing. And I think for that, they're brilliant. I, I do feel for the people who are trying to use the site editor though, because that's in such so, so that the the core version of, if you like, a page builder. Because that's in, in flux so much at the moment and it's changing given the the requirements of the community and the way that the project is evolving. But it feels like it's changing so much that it's it's really difficult. And I think a few things were launched in a way that made them quite hard to figure out. The navigation block is a particular one. I mean, it's significantly improved in recent endeavours, but... When it first came out, I, I took a look at it and thought, I don't know <laughs> what I'm doing here. Um, what was wrong with the menu item that we had in the admin previously? So I, 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 I don't know whether I would want to let clients loose on Gutenberg and site editing at the moment. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. Just a couple things as I drop in here. First, you may be intrigued or a little bit intrigued or thinking about it. As far as being a guest here on my Friday Woo Bits. Now, it's really about knowing a bit about everything, which a lot of us do. You know, where you have just enough knowledge to be dangerous. That's what makes these conversations so much fun. So if you're interested, reach out to me. And do make sure and check out Jetpack.com, where you can now choose individual plugins to install. So let's head back into the show. Yeah, it's interesting what you said about the muscle memory and stuff. When I, so it's been what, about two and a half years ago when I had Do the Woo redone and I was having the agency I hired, they were looking at and they came back and said, uh, what we'd like to do based on what your needs are, we'd like to uh, use Astra, the theme, and Beaver Builder. And actually I paused at first because I thought, ooh, Aren't we heading away from page builders? You know, I had this weird little word pressy moment that, mm. you know, a little deeper than maybe some people might have. And then I thought, but, you know, I'm also paying some significant money here to this agency that I really trust. And they know better than me. I mean, they I feel like, you know, for this particular instance. So I said, yes, go ahead and do that. And when they got more into it and I started poking around into it and we were finalizing it had been several years maybe a handful of years since i'd used beaver builder i'd used it on a site one of my bob wp way back some time ago and at first i went in there and thought oh man i don't remember this sucker and you know it's probably changed some mm. but they walked me through a bit and showed me some stuff and then it started all coming back. And I thought, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah. I thought, now, oh, I remember this. Yeah. Oh, this is kind of cool. Yeah, I, I can get in the flow here. So it was, there was this muscle memory of returning to a page builder after several years. But it started clicking. And now, you know, I mean, I, I pretty much, I don't spend a lot of time adding and subtracting stuff. In fact, I'm going to be doing some stuff and hiring somebody else to yeah. do it. Yeah. Because, again, I just, that's just not what I want to do. I want to make sure it's done right. But it's, uh, yeah, it was interesting to get back in to a page builder. It's interesting that it was an agency that gave you that push, though. But also, given that you recently have redesigned Bob WP, 
and you decided not to use a page builder. I'm curious about that decision. Was that just you thinking, I'm going to do it in inverted commas, the, the, the WordPress way? I, I don't know what that means. But in yeah. other words, I'm not going to install a third party thing. I'm just going to try it with, with blocks. Okay, you are going to install a third party thing. In this case, it's called Cadence. But you're going to try and do it inside the block editor. What What was your, why did you do it that way? I think what happened is I was looking at what I needed and I thought I essentially need a homepage that kind of shows these few things. And then I'm going to have, you know, two other little two or three other simpler pages. Those pages don't need a lot of whatever. And I, and I, I actually thought, well, you know, I have this theme. I have this page builder. I have a license. Maybe I should put it in there. And I thought that almost even at that point seemed too much work for me. Mm. It seemed like I'm adding on another layer for do the woo is just, it works wonderfully because I have a lot more intricate layouts within it. And I knew that, you know, if I could get this homepage down, the rest is easy. I, I don't have to worry about anything else. And so my first grab was at cadence i thought before i even think about anything else that will involve a little bit more time of thinking it was let me look at this and see if this one of these templates just jump out at me and would actually f- be able to work with what i want to present on the home page and fortunately oh, okay. i did yeah so it was like let's go this step let's see if i can do it the easiest way first since it's here ready to go. And right. then if I need to do something else, I may take that next step. And you so you weren't sold. You could have, you could have gone back to, I don't know, page, yeah. page builder, beaver builder element or a whole bunch of others, but you didn't, you, you found something in there that you liked and that was fine. Yeah. 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 I had to have that epiphany moment, you know, that's like within an hour, I give it an hour. If I can't find a template that really looking at it within an hour, then I need to do something else here because now I'm, more familiar with Astra and um, pay, uh, Beaver Builder. How did you? Um, sorry, I'm just totally taking over your. <laughs> no, no, the, your where, podcast where here. You? I'm just asking you. A, <laughs> <laughs> just asking you a bunch of questions. How did you cope with the? So okay, so let's say you've got a typical page builder, and what you see is literally what you get. I mean, obviously the the UI of the page builder disappears when you click publish or save or whatever the word might be. Um, but broadly speaking, you know what you've got pixel by pixel is the same. Whereas blocks, that's not that's not what you're getting all the time, is it? You know, there's subtle differences or the quite dramatic differences in some cases. So you'll save it. And you have to go onto the front end and you go, oh, okay, that's slightly different. The padding there isn't what I expected because of the UI of Gutenberg, you know, the little plus icon that appears and consumes some room. How did you how did you find all that? Was it was it okay? You know, that was the thing. I, I when I opened it, I looked at the template and I thought, okay, they have these I, I don't know what you'd call them. Uh, you know, I don't know the technical term, but they'd have certain things placed that were like blank blank spots yeah you know some block in there that yep. basically was letting something shift over to the left and right i i was very careful because i knew if i hit because i did hit something and i thought well can i just get rid of this thing and then everything kind of right went spastic it was like whoa what happened here this entire block is now kind of a little bit different or a lot different yeah i was looking at that and i thought i've got you know it was almost my mind was, I've got to do these big areas of blocks. You know, they had like sections with three, four or five blocks in them. Can I just delete that section? Getting in and doing the blocks, I was a lot more careful with. It was a lot of them. I thought I'm going to, you know, okay, this one has four, like had like four, three or four highlights. And then you'd put some text on the side. So you'd have to pick like three or four what you want to feature. I, if people go to my site, they'd probably understand it was like community, something yeah, like that. Yeah. So I, I forced myself to think of that number because I didn't dare get rid of one because I thought, is that going to screw up something or is that yes. going to shift something up? So yeah. I, I had to really work well with with what I had in mind. And at the same time, I had to be a little creative and think, oh, maybe I thought of presenting it this way, but I think I could do it this way instead so i was very flexible and it wasn't like written in stone that i was geared to a real 
a look that I may have had inside my head. Mm. It was, I'm going to use this template as yeah, yeah, well yeah, as I yeah. can and present my information. Yeah. I think it's it, I think it's joyous and frustrating in equal measure at the moment. You know, the, you, <laughs> yeah. get, you get great moments of pleasure. Oh, I pulled it off. Or, oh, look, that template's really nice and it does 90% of what I want. And then get the frustration of, oh, I've just deleted something and realized that that was actually pushing something to the left and now it's no longer... <laughs> to the left and it's consuming 100% of the width okay and you just learn you learn the the yeah. way that that blocks do things or you know cadence blocks in particular do things or generate blocks the way that they do things and it's difficult to settle them on i i have this um i have this thing like a child in a in a sweet shop or a candy shop i guess you might say where um where i'm constantly on the lookout for the next thing because mm-hmm. that just fascinates me, and that that's a problem for me. Because I never, never quite seem to be able to settle on on one particular tool. <laughs> Try them all, never get particularly adept on any of them, and that's a that's an Achilles heel of mine. But given what I do, which is talk about WordPress, I think that's probably I can forgive myself that because <laughs> got yeah. to got to know right. what all of these all of these things are doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So anyway, so that, yeah, that was kind of my adventure. And I, I thought it would be great to just talk a little bit about mm. this. I'm sure, you know, it could go on forever and ever. But um, I, I could feel the pain there for a moment. It was like, and the pain was my restraint of resources. And that was basically time. You know, yeah. I don't have the time. And I'm sure there's a lot of people. And I wasn't going to pay for some, because I knew this had to be fairly simple for me because I've done this enough and, you know, back in the day I used to do design. So I knew it could be done. I just needed to find the right magic moment, I guess. It's interesting as well, because I guess given that you've now spent a bit of time with Cadence, maybe that'll be your kind of go to next time. Um, yeah. I wonder how that works in the market, whether, you know, if you've, if a particular theme captures somebody and they like it, I wonder what the, what the chances of them are, going and exploring other options. Yeah. Um, yeah, I actually thought of, yeah, that's a good point, because I actually thought of, um, I have my um, other blog, the one I write about Porto, our move to Porto, and I'm thinking of maybe move, um, putting Cadence in there, too, and, mm. and playing yeah, around with that. Yeah, you Because it, <laughs> I, I, I don't even know what I used. I can't even remember what I used. It's a, it's a pretty basic site, but I thought maybe that might be fun to do so yeah. um, as I build that out a little bit. But I'm not, you know, I'm not adding it to the list right now. That's for damn sure. <laughs> I think you should try something else. I think you should be deliberately <laughs> obstinate with yourself and say, OK, I've tried that one. Now I'm going to try another one and see yeah. where we go. But uh, well, I tried that with this one, and you see what happened. It was yeah, like, uh, screw <laughs> well, it. Did it, know, a, I, I, yeah. did it in a day? It wasn't so <laughs> yeah, bad. Yeah, so, yeah. So pretty nice. So, but that you were talking about um, generate block that kind of intrigues me too. It intrigues me enough that someday, if I suddenly have the urge, I might have to check that out. It's like doesn't intrigue me so much that. And it's just not generate blocks. It's just anything anymore. I, mm. You know, I I'm, I don't get curious enough like I used to in WordPress. I now I I want to focus on my content and stuff, and I've become one of those. You know, where it's like, yeah, somebody yeah. else help me or give me advice or do whatever. You know, I just need to move on. Yeah, you talk to people who are curious, don't you? And they 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 are the they are the people that are curious on yeah, your behalf. Well, yeah, I'm broadly the same now i think it's fair to say <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well before we wrap up um speaking of page builders i know you have a, an event coming up so what's going on with that yeah so we have this event and it's called the page builder summit the url is really unsurprisingly pagebuildersummit.com <laughs> Um, and at the minute, it's we're a couple of weeks away from launching it. It's going to be happening for the week. It happens for five days. It's going from the 20th to the 24th of February. And it's just basically for WordPress page builders. Um, we have a fairly large history of um, doing fairly technical stuff. We've had people really digging into the weeds of how blocks are built and how page builders can achieve this, that and the other. And this year is no different. The, like I said, it's going from the twentieth to the twenty fourth of February. It's totally free. There's an option to watch any of the presentations, and there's thirty odd 
presentations. I can't remember the exact number off the top of my head, but there's over 30. And um, you can watch them free for 20, no, sorry, 48 hours after they initially come out. So if one comes out 9 a.m. on Monday, it'll be available till 9 a.m. on Wednesday. And if you fail to do that, we have this sort of like upsell thing where you can buy access, you know, like you have on a typical summit. Mm -hmm. Um, But we've got loads of different speakers. If you go to the URL that I mentioned a minute ago, pagebuildersummit.com, you can see um, see all the speakers listed, actually, and what their presentation titles are. I won't bore you with those, but you'll see there's a ton of different options, whether you're technical or into marketing or whatever it might be. And, um, yeah, we're just hoping that people show up and enjoy the experience. It's, it's actually quite nice doing this. It's a nice little community because dotted throughout the event, we have these sort of like Zoom calls where we just all hop on and do a bit of co-working or we might just natter about a particular subject. Um, and it's it's really nice. There's a Facebook group that's attached to it. There's about 2,000 people in the Facebook group just dedicated to this event. We, we, we put it to sleep. Facebook allows you to pause a group. So mm. we pause it when the summit ends, I don't know, like 10 days after the summit's end. And then actually just today I resurrected it um, and it's back. So anybody who wants to join that Facebook group, you can do that. The, the way that you keep in touch, if you are interested, then you go to uh, that URL and click the button which says grab your free ticket. There's these pink buttons all over the website, you know, all over the <laughs> website. <laughs> Fill in your email address and we'll keep you posted. But yeah, hopefully... It'll be a fun event and you can watch it live or you can do the replay thing. Cool. All right. Sounds excellent. Well, Nathan, thanks um, for being willing to come in here and just going to shoot off the hip here and talk about stuff. uh, This is planned. It's, uh, yeah, it's just a conversation. Something I've experienced, something I come across. It's fun Mm -hmm. to have some, another person come in and be a guest co-host and, and, yeah, as you said, natter about. I love it. So Nice. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah. Bob, I've very much enjoyed having you on the WP Builds podcast. Thanks so much. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll see you again soon. <laughs> hey, Bob WP. Thanks for listening today. I'm here with the last shout out to our community friend, Jetpack. So do visit them at jetpack.com because, well, as Bob Dylan said, the times, they are a-changing. So... Until the next time here on Do The Woo, keep on doing the woo.